On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a one, a blessed and wonderful Monday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So in the morning, my peeps, we're going to kick it off over there in the St. Catherine North Police Division. Where the Bagwak police in St. Catherine is presently investigating the knockings and clappings that resulted in the loss of life of a 31 year old woman and also the injury of her cousin in an early morning, brazen and brutal, that ended up into a deadly attack. She has since been identified as Shalicia Hilton, said to be a laborer of Bagwak, St. Catherine. Now, the official police report suggests that sometime around 3.30 a.m., Hilton and her cousin was inside a parked motor car along the Crawl Main Road in Riversdale, St. Catherine, when they were pounced upon by criminal elements who alighted from another vehicle. It is said that one of the assailants brandished a handgun and fired several cans inside the vehicle, hitting the woman and also the man all over their bodies. They were subsequently taken to the hospital where it is said that Hilton lost her life and the cousin admitted in serious condition. The police are suggesting that they have no motive at this time for that fatal knockings and clappings. So I'll be playing for you right now the audio clip from that brutal crime scene. Listen. <laughs> Yo, she got a weak pulse, yo. Yo, she got a weak pulse, but you have to move, you move. And still in the St. Catherine North Police Division, a place known as Cheesefield in the Linstead community. This brother here presently on your screen, get can up, lose him three pints. Yeah, man. He has since been identified as Byron. Now, on the spot news media is most definitely checking to see what or who could have caused this man's loss of life in such a brazen and brutal attack. Pictures received by on the spot news media shows the man sitting on a chair and his head slumped to the left with what appears to be a big can hole in a head tap. Lone red substance a leak out on the ground. Yeah man, no shirt, short pants, barefoot. Right beside him like a blue wall in him yard. So I'm pretty sure that people must see a know what go on. Because a broad daylight in him yard. And I'm pretty sure I know him one live. So anyone having any information surrounding the knockings and clappings that took the life of Byron from Cheesefield in Linstead. Please contact the police and give them the necessary information. Yeah, man. Now, over there in the parish of St. Mary, a dispute leaves a father lifeless, no longer among the land of the living, and his son in the custody of the police. So the man who has lost his life has since been identified as 74-year-old Clovis Fort, a taxi operator who lived in the Port Maria housing scheme in St. Mary. Now, the police reports suggest that Fort, that's the father, returned home early Saturday morning and saw his son, 
whose name is being withheld pending further charges and investigation. He saw his son on the veranda watching movies on his phone. An argument developed between both persons, so during which the younger man threw a brick at his father's car. They tussled and then the son allegedly went to the kitchen and got a knife and used it on his father. He got injured in his upper shoulder. It is said that the father collapsed and the son sought assistance from the neighbors in getting him to the Port Maria Hospital, where he was pronounced, you know what. His son was then taken into custody by the police. Really sad situation right around. He's in custody. He's not yet been charged. But the police stated that he will be charged for the offence of taking his father's life. It is said by residents that both men are known to be really fun-loving persons and they just don't know what could have happened and caused a simple argument to blow up in the way that it did where the son used a knife to injure his father which later took his father's life. And given the fact that he sought assistance to take his father to the hospital, must be traumatizing within itself. So my peeps, as I've always stated, if you see a dispute in progress, try to de-escalate that dispute before it escalates and someone end up lose them three pints. <laughs> yeah, man. So watch this now, my peeps. This next story coming out of Western Jamaica, Chulani to be exact. Country, Albert Town, Chulani. This story full up a whole heap of question sign. What could have really go so wrong in a this family that criminal elements could deal with them in such a type of way? Now I want to listen keenly to what I'm about to say. So a 15-year-old girl has been hospitalized and in serious condition after criminal elements invaded her home in Trelawney and attempted to beat her and her family members to death in a violent attack on Sunday. Now on the Spot News Media get to understand that the child remains unconscious after being repeatedly hit in the head with a blunt object. She has been transferred to a major medical facility and remains in serious condition. Her mother, on the other hand, was knocked unconscious by these criminal elements and is also in hospital and in very much similar serious condition. It is understood that a 17-year-old relative was also seriously wounded in that brutal and brazen attack. Now, it is reported that the 39-year-old mother was at home asleep along with her daughter and a niece at Cotton Tree in Albert Town, Chilani, sometime about 2 a.m. when two criminal elements, mask, broke in their dwelling home through a window. It is said that the criminals first attacked the 17-year-old niece who received several blows to the head but she managed to run from the house to seek assistance. It is said that the police was summoned and upon their arrival, the mother was found unresponsive inside the house and her 15-year-old daughter was found outside the house unconscious with both hands bound. Now my peeps, a serious business this one, right or so. Three females, two teenagers and a grown woman was dealt with in a rather severe and inhumane manner. Boy, may I tell you, it seems as if these criminal elements are trying to teach them a lesson. I don't know what kind of business this go on right here, so. But I'm calling out to the residents of Cotton Tree in Albert Town to go to the police with any information that you have surrounding this act of brutality. Three females and two big old dirty grey tone man broke in upon them and deal with them in such a type of way. Whatsoever the message that them did a try to bring across, it could have been dealt with in a more 
decent type of situation. Because we all know them things are just not happen just so it definitely are come off of something. But whatsoever the situation is, we never have to deal with the people them girl pitney in a them type of way there. So my peeps, whosoever have any information surrounding that brutal act that was committed against one of your own, some of your residents, two teens and a grown female, step forward with the information so we can find them to old dirty corner boy there we deal with the people them girl pitney like that. But anyway, my peeps, <laughs> make we continue. Now over there in the neighboring parish of St. James, a community known as Porto Bello was rocked with a knockings and clappings that resulted in the last life of this man presently on your screen, who has since been identified only by his alias, Money Time. It is said that the criminal elements them deal with theme situation a certain type of way, as five can lodging at the ras head leaving him lifeless, no longer among the land of the living. It is said that it took place right behind the plaza and it is also said that two brothers is responsible for his knockings and clappings. So CJ and Gio, what really go on with Uno and the Natty make Uno deal with the Natty in such a type of way? Yeah, man. So we have a lot for reason about you know, CJ and Gio. We have whole heap for talk about because we now have some serious explaining to do as it relates to the knockings and clappings Monday night we're gone. Sometime a little after midnight, right behind the plaza. So all who are listening to on this spot news media, just make CJ and Gio know say. We need for all our reasoning. Yeah, man. A word to the wise. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to Andy Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscasts. Andy Spot News Media. Yeah, man.